Hello and welcome to Excel-BoardTemplates.com. This is Steve Equals True. Please visit my blog at Excel-BoardTemplates.com where you're sure to learn the latest posts, tips, tricks, and techniques and learn everything about Excel. All right, today uh, we've had a lot of comments in on the two access columns uh, within Microsoft Excel. So you can see we've got data here of very small values and very large values. Uh, most readers want to put the large values to the secondary access or vice versa so that you can uh, see the actual smaller data points. Notice if I hit the delete key uh, and get rid of the secondary access, the uh, T values are so small you can't even really tell what they are. Uh, so uh, some people think it's a bug. I think Excel would be better served if they had a an option to actually uh, either not overlap these or overlap them because when you do move them to the secondary axis you'll notice that it automatically overlaps the two charts uh, and you can't see what's on your primary or secondary um, the columns overlap so uh, we've had lots of comments on that but uh, I had also had a reader write in and say I'd like to know how to do that with a pivot chart so let's go ahead and show you how you do that with a pivot chart um, so we've got our data here what you want to do is you do want to create two additional uh, columns of data. Now you don't have to um, put this with inside your data. Uh, you can just move it out here to the right so that you're not affecting the data. Um, just kind of a real quick easy tr trick to do. Highlight your data range and then go up to your insert ribbon to insert the pivot table. I do it with keystrokes of Alt D and then the letter P and we are going to use this list or database. It's that list that I have defined over there and we're going to just put this right into the existing worksheet in column G1. Alright, so now we have our pivot table data. Here are the pivot table fields. I want to move month into rows. I'm going to put T into my values. I'm going to grab gap 1 next and put that right below uh, values of T. Then I'm going to do this gap 2 and then I'm going to do coffee. Now, once I have that uh, all set up um, over there, we don't need the pivot table fields anymore. Um, what we want to do is click anywhere within our pivot table, go up to our insert ribbon, go to our column chart button, and pick a 2D column chart. Now you can see here we have our uh, column charts, um, and this is where we want to um, move the columns over to the secondary access, these large ones for coffee. Um, now, in order to do this in a pivot chart, I, I recommend selecting your chart, going up to your design ribbon, and you have this button right here, change chart type. Now, we're not actually going to change the chart type of these. Oops, let's go back and select actually a data series, then do change chart type. Now, it brings us right here into this combo chart, and you see it's got these handy dandy buttons over here of which ones do we want on the secondary axis. I can click those. Uh, rather easily and then click on OK and my chart is all set up for me. I don't have to right click on them, format data series, find secondary access. I just like doing it that way a, a lot easier nowadays with Excel 2013. Alright, so uh, a few other things we want to do is we want to clean up our values by getting rid of our legends of the count of gap 1, count of gap 2. Now we also have these field values. Let us see, what are they called? They are value field buttons on the top of the chart. We could either hide them like you see there um, or if you don't want to hide them you just want to not have count of gap 1 and count of gap 2. Go back to your chart data in your pivot table and I enter a space um, for count of gap 1 and I'll enter two spaces on count of gap 2. And now uh, my chart, um, it has those little bubbles there so it's not horrible. I can see the sum and the coffee of tea and coffee so uh, hopefully your readers won't find that too obtrusive and you are now have been able to create a clustered column chart with two different axes in Excel using a pivot table um, and showing it so that it doesn't overlap. If you don't believe me, let's go ahead and highlight just month, tea, and coffee. I'm going to go up to insert. I'm going to select the column chart here, and I'm going to go ahead and move T here to the uh, secondary axis. And once I do that, look at that, it overlaps them. So um, in order to create those gaps on each one of those, uh, we just need to add an extra data series so that your chart ultimately looks like this. Hopefully you found this helpful and you can use it in your day-to-day -day Excel life. Uh, once again, please uh, visit Excel-BoardTemplates.com where you're sure to get other great posts and tricks out there. Also, don't forget to sign up for my YouTube channel so that you get the next delivery in your inbox of my latest video. Thank you.